Hey, MCE crew, you know that one of the things we do here on the channel is we look at what the wealthy are doing and see if we can apply any of the behaviors that they exhibit to our personal economy. In so doing, we are looking for financial independence, okay? And you know that in this world we're living in today, it's never been more vital to be independent financially and otherwise. So let's take a look at the sovereign wealth funds. And you might say, well, what is a sovereign wealth fund? Well, a sovereign wealth fund is an entity that manages a nation's savings, right? So uh, you might have a sovereign wealth fund for Sweden, for example, and we'll take a look at them. China has a sovereign wealth fund because they have a national savings. Now, Sweden, what they do with their sovereign wealth fund is they apply the return to uh, the national pension or their version of Social Security. Uh, the country of Saudi Arabia, they have a pretty uh, vast welfare system where their citizens are uh, always their citizens get benefits based on the oil revenue. That has traditionally been how they've done it. However, Saudi Arabia looked at the situation and they see the oil revenues, uh, you know, going away one day, okay, as the country, as the world switches to uh, more renewable sources. So uh, United Arab Emirates, they have a sovereign wealth fund. They're doing the same thing. They're moving away from oil and investing in other things in order to be able to continue to provide these benefits to their citizens. Now, let me tell you this. In Saudi Arabia, the sovereign wealth fund and the ability to continue to provide these welfare benefits are very, very important because it's one of the things that provides stability in that nation. And the Saudi kingdom, the you know, the royal family, the you know, as a prince, you throw a rock in any direction, you hit a prince. Uh, but they are really uh, incentivized to keep that going simply because if it ever stopped, they more than likely have revolution on their hands. The largesse of uh, their investments keeps people pacified for the most part, okay? And it works the same way in the United States to a degree. Now, you might be asking yourself, does the United States of America have a sovereign wealth fund? No, actually we don't. Uh, and that's because the United States government chooses to just spend uh, the people in our government don't seem to understand macroeconomics and things like balance sheets uh, and, you know, liabilities versus assets. So we don't have a sovereign wealth fund uh, for our national government, uh, which might be a good idea as the Social Security system is, you know, pretty much insolvent. Uh, they just raised the premiums on uh, Medicare for some of those recipients. So again, uh, we're showing cracks in our system here of uh, unfunded liabilities. Several of the states do have their own wealth funds, uh, which is good, uh, I suppose. But let's take a look at what is in. What are these sovereign wealth funds investing in? I think that's going to be very instructive. Now, as always, just because the country of Umbapa Mau Mau invest in whatever doesn't mean necessarily that you should, okay? You have to do your own due diligence. But I will say this. When we look at the sovereign wealth funds, you have to understand that they are managed by some of the best and brightest in terms of financial management in the entire world, okay? Can you imagine being in charge of the Sovereign Wealth Fund of China, you have every incentive to get a return because uh, if you don't, you might be facing more than just being fired, okay? Um, labor camp or worse. So let's, take, let's start taking a look at some of these Sovereign Wealth Funds and what they're investing in, okay? How they're investing their money. So first, let's take a look at the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Sweden. See what the Swedes are over there doing. Well, the uh, size of their sovereign wealth fund is 
trillion dollars. And the, like I said before, they're using that. Uh, and I'm sorry, Norway, not Sweden. I get the, the Nordic countries confused sometimes. My bad. OK, not Sweden, Norway. Norway's uh, sovereign wealth fund is one point three trillion dollars. They started it up in 1990, uh, and it's the largest of its kind out there. So they've been going strong with it since 1990. Uh, they've got investments in over 9,000 corporations. Uh, and what happened was they thought about, they said, look, we got to establish this thing. They thought about doing that after Norway discovered oil in the North Sea and they said, look, let's not put all our eggs in one basket. Let's go ahead and diversify the revenues that we're getting or uh, the profits that we're getting from oil and spread that around. Uh, because, you know, maybe they were thinking, who knows? This These oil deposits, they might not last forever. So smart move on the part of Norway. And keep in mind, the uh, Saudis, oil rich nation, they... Uh, just started theirs up a few years ago, okay? So, Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund is actually one of the world's largest shareholders of Apple. Uh, they've got a $27 billion stake as of June of 2021. So, you can see they have gone ahead and decided tech's a good bet. They've invested in Apple, a stable company, uh, a company that, you know, I personally invest in. So, Gives me some faith here that uh, my due diligence has um, been in line with the due, dil due diligence of Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund. And uh, they are not trading, okay? They're investing. So there's no one at a computer all day, every day, going through and making these rapid fire trades. They're investing. And if they've got um, $27 billion in Apple, then they've got a pretty good income coming off of the dividend as well as the appreciation of the stock. Okay, so uh, let's take a look in comparison. The Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, that started in 1992, that's the world's largest mutual funds by asset, by assets, and it too is worth $1.3 trillion. So um, just use that as a comparison to uh, Norway Sovereign Wealth Fund. Now let's look at China. China's Sovereign Wealth Fund, they call it the China Investment Corporation. It's uh, worth $1.2 trillion and they started it in 2007. The China Investment Corporation is the largest of several Chinese Sovereign Wealth Funds and it was established to diversify the country's foreign exchange holdings. Okay, so they're making money uh, holding, you know, foreign exchange uh, assets and decided, again, let's uh, diversify. Now, how does their sovereign wealth fund look? Well, you know, China is uh, pretty secretive with regard to a lot of things. Like, for example, the Chinese Secret Service. What's the name of it? Hell of a secret, right? Exactly. So uh, what they have done here is they've just categorized kind of the asset classes that they're in. Uh, they've got 57, well, not the asset classes, but the actual areas geographically that they're in. They've got 57% of the fund in uh, the U.S., U.S.-owned corporations. They've got, uh, and other assets, probably some fixed income assets out of America. They've got 31% in non-U.S. developed markets, and they're saying they've got 12% in emerging markets. Now, uh, according to some experts that are out there, China also has a lot of its sovereign wealth fund in gold. OK, not an overwhelming amount, but uh, we do see that uh, they do have some in uh, one of their sovereign wealth funds. And um, we also see that the army of China is buying gold in addition to the uh, that main uh, sovereign wealth fund uh, in China. They're both buying gold. So it's very possible that the army of the uh, People's Liberation Army of China has its own sovereign wealth fund. They did say that, uh, you know, China has uh, several. Okay. 
So that's what China's doing. They're doing a lot of U.S. equities and a lot of, you know, stuff based in the U.S., equities and fixed income. Um, they're doing some gold. And they also, we did a video on gold. Watch it. Um, we did a video on gold pertaining to China specifically. All right. Uh, and they've got some in emerging markets, but the most of it is in the U.S., almost 60%. Here's another oil-rich uh, uh, country. We talked about Saudi Arabia, but Kuwait has a $693 billion uh, sovereign wealth fund. Started up in 1953. Abu Dhabi, uh, $649 billion. Uh, Hong Kong, now this is um, kind of interesting, uh, seeing as Hong Kong actually has been reabsorbed into the government of China. Uh, Hong Kong calls theirs the Monetary Authority Investment Portfolio. And um, it says it, it has helped them weather some financial crises. So let's look at it from another standpoint in terms of what they've got, uh, what some of these countries have going on with regard to their sovereign wealth funds. The two largest sovereign wealth funds are China and Norway. Uh, Norway being one, uh, number one at 1.3 trillion and China coming in uh, at 1.2 trillion. Okay, so almost an equivalent amount of uh, assets. Now, let's take a look at Norway really quickly here to understand uh, their mix of uh, how they are uh, investing in terms of asset class. So uh, they've got 72.8% in equities, public equity stocks, right? They're heavy on that. Uh, these stocks are diversified uh, over 69 countries, and it accounts to 9,123 companies. OK, so again, 72 percent, almost 73 percent of Norway's uh, sovereign wealth fund is concentrated in stocks. They have 24 percent in fixed income bonds, 24.7 percent to be exact in bonds. And then they've got 2.5 percent in real estate diversified across 14 countries and uh, 867 properties. OK, so that's how they're doing it. Let's compare that to uh, China in that main sovereign wealth fund they have and what they're doing in terms of asset class, okay? Okay, China has 38% of its sovereign wealth fund in stocks. It has another 17% in fixed income bonds and it has alternative assets and they list that as 43%. Now I'm sure that category is, part of that is made up of gold. We talked about that a second ago. And that probably also includes real estate for them as well. Because if you've been following the Evergrande uh, uh, issue uh, that they're having, China, they look at real estate as, you know, a huge investment opportunity. And it's really funny because you as an individual, you're not allowed to own uh, real estate in China. You can, you know, buy a building or an apartment, but you can't own the land, all right? And this has been proven in China time and time again. If they need to do a public project like the uh, Three Gorges Dam and, you know, you've been living there, your family's been living in this spot for 300 years, they don't care. They come through, raise it, and keep it moving. Uh, then they have 2% in cash, okay? Now, uh, that's how it weighs out for them. So what can we learn from this? First of all, what we can learn is that these sovereign wealth funds apparently are really, um, really wild about stock, okay? They see that as uh, the best way to, or they see that as the best place to put most of the money in their sovereign wealth funds, okay? China at 40% uh, percent almost, it's a healthy uh, amount, and Norway again at 72.8%. So stocks is where they're putting that money. Where else are they putting it? Well, real estate. And again, China's alternative category does include, it's going to include that. Uh, now bonds, uh, when they're investing the type of money that they are in bonds, they're going for safety. Uh, because right now with the inflation in the U.S., bonds are not, you know, not the best way to play it. But I'm sure a lot of these bonds also have been out there for a long, they have long uh, durations on these bonds. Because again, this is a country investing, okay? 
And a country is going to outlive us as a human, you know, many times. There have been some countries that have been very short-lived. Uh, but, like the Soviet Union, for example. Uh, not Russia, Soviet Union. So when you talk about needing to be able to pay public benefits, and in some cases, again, like Saudi Arabia, needing to be able to do that in order to keep your regime stable, then, you know, bonds may have uh, a certain appeal, okay? Uh, but for us as individuals, one of the major differences between us and a sovereign wealth fund is the fact that we're not going to uh, live for hundreds of years, okay? Uh, however, your legacy will, depending on what you do, good or bad. Uh, so if you are thinking about creating generational wealth, then, you know, you have a different sort of approach uh, as opposed to someone who's like, yeah, I'm going to spend it all. I'm going to check to the undertaker is going to bounce. Okay. They have different uh, perspective on what they should be investing in and how they should be spending as well. Okay. So I hope you've been able to learn something from that with regard to, uh, you know, where to invest. We saw that a lot of these investments are placed in U.S. equities. Okay. Uh, and asset classes that appeal to uh, very wealthy countries. And we identified the, you know, ringleader as stocks. Okay, guys, listen, check out this video. If you cannot see this video, it's because of your settings. Uh, I had someone tell me today that they can't see what I'm pointing at. Well, I'm pointing at tags and I'm pointing at end screens. Uh, and if you can't see those, then you might want to check your settings. But you want to check this video out because it's going to teach you a little technique on how to grow your money. So check it out and guys, I'll talk to you soon.